So hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This video is a continuation of previous discussions of crystallization. We begin with an introduction to crystallization and the factors influencing it in the first video. The second video covered the mechanism of crystallization. Now in this installment, we will dwell into the classification of crystallization. This video will provide a brief overview of the different ways in which crystallizers are classified and we will plan to explore each type of crystallizer in separate upcoming videos. So be sure to stay tuned for more content. Moving on now with the classification of crystallizers. Firstly, we will be concentrating on their mode of operations. Based on that, crystallizers may be classified as batch operations or continuous operations. The widely used crystallizer is a continuous type, but still for some specific and special cases batch crystallizers are used. An example of batch crystallizer is a stir tank crystallizer, which is an industrial equipment used for controlled crystallization. It consists of a stirred vessel with temperature control promoting uniform crystal growth from liquid solution or melts. This process is crucial in various industries to produce high quality crystals for products like chemical and pharmaceutical. And the second mode of operation is continuous crystallizers where a common example of continuous crystallizer is Swenson Walker crystallizer which is an industrial tool designed for controlled crystallization. It involves a rotating drum or a vessel which is equipped with a temperature regulation which encourages consistent crystal formation from liquid solution or melts. This technique is widely applied in industries to produce refined crystals for items such as chemicals and pharmaceuticals. So the first area on which the classification was done was on the mode of operation which was batch and continuous. Now, Another classification of the crystallizers other than the mode of operation is based on the method according to which supersaturation is achieved. So here are the crystallizers that are classified based on achieving supersaturation from which the first is agitated tank crystallizer and the Swenson Walker crystallizers. These are those crystallizers wherein supersaturation takes place when the solution is cooled. These crystallizers are used for material where solubility decreases with a decrease in temperature. These methods are crucial for generating high quality crystals in various industries where precise control over crystal growth is essential for the product quality and uniformity. Next is the crystal crystallizer. In contrast, crystal crystallizers achieve supersaturation by evaporating a portion of the solvent. It finds application for substances with consistent solubility across different various temperatures. This method is particularly valuable in industries which are dealing with substances like salts where controlling crystal growth through solvent evaporation is very vital, which is for obtaining desired product characteristics and quality. Now the next type of crystallizer is vacuum crystallizer. A vacuum crystallizer is such a type of crystallizer where supersaturation is achieved by adiabatic evaporation and cooling. This type of crystallizer is most suitable for heat sensitive material. These crystallizers are used for a large scale production and supersaturation is achieved by exposing hot solution to vacuum. Here the pressure of the system is less than the vapor pressure of the solvent where it is fed to the crystallizer. The solvent thus flashes because of the low pressure and the solution cools down adiabatically. Using a third substance for salting is usually not required. For the evaporation of glycerin soap lies, we find the indirect application of salting method. This mechanism of crystallization goes like this. The presence of glycerin in high concentration reduces the solubility of solute and because of this, the concentration of solute increases and this induces the less soluble component to crystallize. So guys, now summarizing the classification based on the method of achieving supersaturation, which we can consider in three types, from which first is the supersaturation by cooling alone, second is supersaturation by adiabatic evaporation and cooling, and third is the supersaturation by evaporation. 
in the first super saturation by cooling alone imagine that you are making crystals by cooling down a liquid mixture this can be done by the two types first is the batch agitated tank crystallizer which is like a big stirring pot where the mixture cools and crystals forms inside as if it is done by magic and second there is a continuous swenson walker crystallizer this one's is like a crystal making conveyor belt as the mixture moves along and cools crystal appears step by step so super saturation by cooling alone includes two types of crystallizer which is batch agitated crystallizer and swenson walker crystallizer one is batch another is continuous the second type of classification was super saturation by adiabatic evaporation and cooling now here think about making crystals by letting some of the liquid turn into vapor these groups includes vacuum crystallizers and some with an extra part called as external classifying seed bed they work like smart crystal growing chamber and the last type for this section is super saturation by evaporation another way to get the crystals is by letting some of the liquid to evaporate this can be done by two types from which the first is the crystal crystallizer which works great for the stuff that doesn't mind changing temperature it's like making crystals from the disappearing liquid and second is the draft tube crystallizer which is also using evaporation medium but with a little twist now up next is the classification of crystallizer according to the method of suspending the growing products from which the first is the agitated tank Imagine a big tank where the crystal mixture is swirling around. It's like a dance party for the crystals. This kind of machine stirs everything up to help the crystals form into the mix. For the second case of heat exchanger, now think of a setup where the crystal mixtures flow through something called as heat exchanger. It's like the crystals are going on a little journey through a cool place. this helps them to grow nicely and strongly and the last is about the scrapped surface exchanger here's a cool one imagine the crystal mixture moving through a scrapped surface exchanger it's like a special tunnel where the crystals are gently scraped off the walls as they grow it's like getting a helping hand to become more awesome so guys that's all for this video where in this video we discussed about the classification of crystallizer and if you find this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative video related to process engineering chemical engineering process safety industrial safety and as always feel very free to leave any questions or comment down below thanks for watching and see you in next video